good afternoon uh, and you can probably see that I'm not in my leaf today uh, the reason being I'm basically driving home from work and uh, as I've mentioned before I've been looking at whether I can justify buying a second EV purely for um, commuting uh, because the commute I do at the moment is just that fraction too far for my 24 kilowatt hour leaf uh, and then is there somewhere to charge it at work? Can I make it there and back without um, having to potter along at 50 mile an hour everywhere? Uh, so to fill in some of those um, gaps, I had a bit of a meeting uh, two days ago. Uh, I was, it was quite positive actually. My company are already looking at introducing charging points. Uh, it's kind of early stages, but the person who's overseeing it, they drive an EV. So it's already off to a really good start and um, I had quite a long chat with him he uh, already knew a lot of the points that I wanted to make around um, the type of chargers where they should be installed how they should work um, and the best way of benefiting the most amount of people so things are happening obviously with all these things it always takes time but um, I'm ju I've just got to hold off a little bit longer because if they put the charger in, I can uh, pay a lot less money and buy a second 24 kilowatt hour leaf and just nip backwards and forwards to work and charge it there. If they don't, then hopefully when the new leaf is launched, the 30 kilowatt hour leaves, uh, the current ones, will become a little bit cheaper and then um, you know, for the sake of waiting a few months, it's probably worth me doing that. So uh, that's where we are at the moment with that. But that's not what I want to talk about in today's video. In fact, what I want to talk about, I didn't want to talk about at all, but um, over the last few days, seeing people's reaction has made me want to talk about it. And that is about um, Tesla and certainly the truck, but more importantly, the Roadster that they've just launched. Now, the reason I didn't want to talk about it is because it's everywhere. It's all over social media, it's all over the news, everyone's seen it. Um, it could be a bit boring if I'm just another person going on about it. We know how good it is. The reason I've now come to want to talk about it is because of the reaction that I've seen in so, so many people. What it's basically done is it's reignited that interest again, that people that don't drive EVs um, are now looking at them and wanting to know more about them. And they've, um, it basically, lots and lots of people, where before I'm always talking at people about EVs and trying to tell them how great they are, they're all coming to me now and they're all asking me, what can we buy what can we afford for this amount of money how can we make it work for us uh, and it's, it's really really interesting how the launch of it's more around the roadster the launch of that roadster has really changed people's mindsets again and for that reason uh, I think it's a really really positive thing now let me start with the truck because I am no expert in HGVs uh, and um, there's no point in me talking about it lots and lots because uh, to be honest, I don't know what I'm talking about. Other than to say, this, to me, potentially, is going to put hydrogen fuel cells back again. And the reason I say that is because I, for a long time, have said, I don't see hydrogen working in cars. There's too much infrastructure and too much change and um, adaption to take place to bring it to the masses. I think when there's already an answer here with electric vehicles. I thought, uh, sort of heavy goods vehicles, uh, maybe trains, uh, that, that sort of uh, load bearing, long distance driving vehicle, I thought that could be the niche that hydrogen could fill. Well now I've just seen this truck, um, I'm wondering if maybe hydrogen have missed the boat on that as well. Because that truck can go hundreds of miles between charges, charge up incredibly quickly, and when you look at the statistics, uh, yeah, I know they're not about 0 to 60 times, but it just gives you an idea of how powerful these trucks are. Um, so for that reason, uh, I think that possibly we're having a glimpse to the future now. And then you add on all the other bits and pieces that Tesla do with the autopilot and the extra safety features. Uh, it's a really, really good package. And it sounds to me like they are um, getting orders in. Um, and again, I did wonder whether this whole launch was all about uh, raising money just to get the Model 3 on the road because obviously they're having a lot of trouble with it um, and I think they need a bit of a cash injection just to smooth the way for the last bit of that process but um, 
but the end result is this incredible truck but then from that out the back of it rolls this roadster and this as I say has got people excited again this has got people looking at and asking about EVs and the big reason is um, because and you've probably seen this now I'll, I'll put it up on the screen now the comparison that has been going all over the internet of the Tesla Roadster against the Bugatti uh, Chiron and look at the difference in the stats I mean 1.9 seconds to 60 mile an hour uh, and after the launch Elon Musk then tweeted that this is this is just the base model there there will be um, enhancements that will make it go even quicker I mean it, it's just an incredible not only looking car but performing car that uh, there's nothing else uh, ice wise in that price bracket that can come anywhere near it and that says it all to me that just shows that we've kind of hit that point now where even the supercars can't compete it um, it it's reignited everybody's interest it's uh, put EVs right at the head of I, I would suggest most people's idea of what they want to buy because it just proves that EVs can go long distances at incredible speeds and look amazing uh, and you know if you were to be critical the only thing that's missing that people could possibly want is a uh, a really nice really interesting engine noise uh, and you know what if you can do without that I think I can um, you pretty much that is as good as cars get at the moment and um, I'm gonna be really excited to see how that develops once it goes into production once we get some variants of it uh, and you know I've got to be honest I'm never gonna get to drive the thing like I'm never gonna get to drive a Bugatti but it doesn't stop me from being interested in it and it doesn't stop other people from being interested in it and that is the point of today's video uh, Tesla have pulled it out the bag again they without them we would be nowhere near where we are at the moment with EVs we wouldn't um, have the amount of people on the road in the likes of the Nissan Leaf the Renault Zoe um, the Bolt you know all those cars that we can afford uh, they wouldn't be on the road I, I don't believe without Tesla and I think they've just knocked it on a, a stage further so I'm um, kind of thank you to Tesla for that uh, and I hope that the issues that they're having with the Model 3 resolve themselves quickly because I want to see the, the fallout from that being that lots of people buy Model 3s but also they keep evolving and they keep developing these incredible vehicles um, that really take us forward and on that positive note I'm gonna uh, end today's video uh, there's not a lot more happening today other than running kids around to clubs and um, there, there is nothing of interest to show you I just wanted to uh, share with you my thoughts on on the um, the launch of these two Tesla vehicles um, hopefully you've enjoyed it if you have remember to like and share it and if you're not doing so already subscribe to the channel and um, I'll see you again very soon take care